on here are. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> it's another week. It's the it's a new we got a new month. This mm-hmm. birthday month. For those that don't know, Pastor and I share a birthday month. Oh yeah. One of us forgets every year. <laughs> I cannot figure this out. There we go. I don't forget my own birthday. You're right. I don't know how you would forget your own birthday. Forget my birthday. No, I don't. If y'all saw um, when we did, uh, if you watched the service online and you saw how we did, uh, you know, we, usually first of the month people stand up and they say, uh, you know, if it's your birthday, like stand up and we sing. Pastor left the pulpit, walked to the front row, sat down, and then announced, if it's your birthday month, please stand up so he can stand up. Sometimes you just want to be in the number, huh? What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. I just, I just thought, uh, it was, it was a fun, how, how was it for you? <laughs> how was that for you? No, I was just trying to, you know, if I'm, I'm often the one who's standing during that period of time, yeah, um, unless unless there are ushers, and and so I had to just hey, sit down and then stand up when they asked for birthday month people. Yeah, and I was one of them. So yeah, um, I'm not blaming you, but uh, so for those that don't know, I work in our audiovisual ministry, and so we try to create a a visual experience for those in service and online and so when you left the pulpit we we were trying to find you oh so we didn't know where you went dang where's waldo yeah yeah i was like find him find him him." (laughs) so yeah because uh we want to make sure people at home can uh can see as much as they can um, of what's going on in service, right. make it feel like they're in service. Cool. Thank you for that attentiveness. Yeah, we strive for it. Strive for it. Well, happy early birthday. Well, happy today birthday. <laughs> today is your birthday. Happy birthday, CT. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. You know, another. I had this conversation with some friends yesterday. Um, and it's not like the age that you are is the age that you just completed. So think about like a baby. A baby's born and their first birthday is a celebration of their first year of life. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they come out one year old. You're celebrating the year that just passed, not like a future year. It makes it a different perspective when you think about it. Hmm. Okay. So like, you say you're turning, right? Like on your birthday, let's say you're turning 42. <laughs> let's say. Let's say. It's not. <laughs> you've completed your 42nd year and you're going into your 43rd year yeah. when it's your birthday. Mm-hmm. That's true. You're celebrating what, what you've gone through, not what's about to come. Uh-huh. Okay. Which is kind of crazy. That's good. So... I've been uh, I've been on that. I've been thinking about that. I was like, huh. I was like, so do I celebrate the age that I completed? Because they're like, what are you looking forward to in the next year? And it's like, well, I'm I'm celebrating the wrong number. If you think about it. No, you're celebrating whatever age you're turning. Like you just said, you're celebrating what you've completed, what you've come through. Yeah. What you've finished so what's next yeah should should we say like i'm this many years old or should you say like so so do you say once you turn 42 i'm 42 throughout the whole year but actually you're 43 throughout the whole year no you're 42 throughout the whole year i think you're 43 how Cause when you have you when you turn forty two, you've celebrated forty two years on the planet. Correct. Yeah. So after that, you're in year forty three. So it's like right now it's eleven, the clock is fast. It's eleven fifty five. Okay. But it's still eleven. But it's just fifty five minutes in eleven. You feel what I mean? That 
So mm-hmm. if I'm 42, I'm still 42 until I make it to 43. I may be 42 in one day, 42 in three days, 42 in three months. But I'm still, you, you understand what I'm saying? I'm still 42. It's like the. <laughs> Huh. A... Hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> you okay? You got an aha moment or something? <laughs> Just like think about the. I'm having a couple of aha moments. <laughs> that one on the way here. My eyes are puffy. <laughs> one now. It's been a lot. It's been an active day. A good day. A good, yeah. a good birthday. I'm very happy to be able to birthday. celebrate another year yeah um yeah and time and uh, time we get to philosophizing if we start talking about time hey time is it's precious and it is um as though we had on a shirt sunday i think was pretty cool he had a cross and it said yolo oh (laughs) you only live once yeah then it was like um Psych, something like that. I'll be right, be right, BRB. Oh, be right back. You know, when funny. Jesus died on the cross, oh, you know, yeah. every, all of us, we only live once. Yeah, he died on the cross, then he went in the grave Sunday. He was resurrected, so he came back to life. Yeah, that, cool. that but cool. time is something that's precious, and I think uh, we must be intentional of how we use our time and don't waste it and do things that makes you happy. Yeah, do you have any like goals or thoughts for the next? year like going into your next year yeah i want to make money i need to figure out a way to make money i'm a poor preacher so i gotta figure out other revenues what's on your shirt polo what polo is money polo is what money what you mean like it costs to to wear that shirt it's not cheap yeah off the clearance right that's where i go i go to the clearance rack (laughs) oh okay (laughs) Or the outlet. <laughs> I promise you, this church, this shirt did not cost no more than twenty five to thirty dollars. <laughs> Think it's a game. Is it is market market shop? This shirt is old. Yeah, I had a long time. Okay, so make money. What is like? Is there a number? Is there like a, a number of dollars? Is it a number of investments? Is it a number of accounts? Hmm. No number yet. Not to say, just trying to figure out other ways to have income and. And I uh, want to do some investment properties. Mm. And, you know, trying to really figure out. And then I also want to figure out some stuff for the church, too, uh, how we can pr- improve our economic status as um, African American people in this world. That's pretty dope. Yeah. That's a good goal. I'm excited for you. Can't wait to see how much money you're going to borrow. I'm poor. No, you're not. Because you're about to make some money. Maybe, yeah. That's the goal. That's the goal. Yeah, and teaching, you know. And then I'm trying to raise money too for this this building for the yeah, church. Yeah, we need to build it. I'm trying to raise money for that too. So, a lot going on. A lot going on, and there's a lot going on in this text. So let's get to it. Hi everyone, welcome to NTZ Overflow Podcast. I am your birthday host Cassandra Thorpe <laughs> here with my forever guest, my also birthday host. Reverend Dr. Marcus Allen, hey, hey. the first. Um, and today we are we have moved away from the New Testament and our friend Paul, who's been in prison, <laughs> to the first book of the Bible. We're here in Genesis. Um, I, so I'm not, well, I I forget how much happened in Genesis. Now, there's a lot. Oh, that yeah. happens in in this book. We've got uh, Adam and Eve and the fall of man. We got a murder, Cain and Abel. We got Noah, and there's something else. Some, some, uh, something else going on before it. Solomon, Gamar. Mm-hmm. We got Abraham. And Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Twelve sons of Israel. Then you got Joseph. Then. Joseph's life pretty much ends the book of Genesis. Joseph, yes. So there's a lot. There's a lot in this book. Um, and that's just the beginning. I that's see. what Genesis means. The yes. beginning. Look at that. Always a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the 32nd chapter of Genesis. Um, 
and verse, so Genesis 32, 22 through 32. And I'm going to apologize right now. Uh, yeah, we don't have a sermon for this one because the sound cut out. We had to shut some stuff off, turn it back on. Um, I honestly thought Pastor was going to fire me in the middle of his sermon. I promise you. Like, the what you don't see and what you don't feel, which is good, <laughs> are the daggers that I was being, that were thrown at me. Daggers, flamethrowers shots everything was just coming the fire was burning from his eyes and it was like at me and i felt that and i apologize to to you pastor and to you who come and and watch us we are we are learning about technology my background is in psychology which is people <laughs> and not things <laughs> so you're learning so i ask for continued grace uh, but that is why we are here in the overflow so because there's definitely overflow from from sunday yeah yeah, it was it was a challenging day with all mics, every mic that came. I don't know why the mics work until I, I touch them. Uh, and when it's time for preaching, um, the mics want to act up. Even the old dependable wire mic uh, would not work for me on Sunday, so it was very discouraging. And But the but, message still got out. The mics wasn't working, but the message still got out. And I went back and watched online. It's clearer online than it was in the building. Mm. Somehow that. And then, is the audience mic? Uh, I was wondering where that sound was coming from. It was There's a, one of the, the camera upstairs has uh, volume. Like, there's sound that comes through that mm -hmm. one. And so that one captures the, the audience sound. And the audience was louder than me. Yeah. But... That one mic, mic, it was coming through clear. Yeah, the, um, the choir but mic. I couldn't hear myself, so it was... I really didn't have a voice until, like, yesterday. So why uh, why do you want to hear yourself? Because I need to hear hear, hear how I'm sounding. It's like um, if you talk and you can't hear yourself saying anything. Have you ever done that before? Like you speaking into a microphone... And it's just going out, and it's not coming back to you. I don't know. It helps me to be to be focused. If I can't hear myself, it's annoying. It's it's hmm. a struggle. Hmm. Even though you know the sound is going out, mm -hmm. if you can't hear yourself, hmm. yeah, I don't know how to explain it. I know it just it just throws me off. Hmm. Um, but if I can hear myself, and I like to hear myself loud too, um, then it allows me. to like uh, I really hate going to places where the speakers are in front of the pulpit and there are no monitors in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. It's tough. It's tough for me to really, you know, give my presentation, a sonic presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a thought, but we'll save that for not the podcast. Okay. Uh, so we're in Genesis thirty-two. Uh, and we are talking about we got Jacob, Esau, and their pappy. Who's their dad? Who? Is it Israel? No, Isaac. Who's their dad? Who? Jacob and Esau. Isaac. Isaac. Mm -hmm. Abraham had a son. Isaac was the only one. Oh. Led him to the mountain high. The so it's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. The song I know is Father Abraham. And Father many sons. Abraham. Okay, yeah. And many sons have Father Abraham. I never really liked I that song. I'm one of them and so are you. Okay. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Okay. VBS, baby. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Tell us what's going on here in the text with um, with these uh, individuals, including Hannah. 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 I'm just naming them all people. <laughs> Y'all, I had a moment on the way here. I'm, I'm getting myself together. Go ahead, Pastor. You got it. <laughs> so, uh, basically, is you no. Know, of course, Abraham is the father of faith. God gives him a promise that, hey, the, the, your seed shall be like the sand on the seashore and the stars in the sky. So, that means you're going to have a lot of children. And so, Abraham is the father of faith for the three major religions across the world. That's Islam, Christianity, and Judaism all believe that Abraham is the father of faith. Abraham is faithful, and God gives him a son 
His son is Isaac. Isaac then gets his wife, Rebecca. She's unable to have a child. They pray. God blesses her to be able to have a child, but she is going through pain and she's hurting. And she said, hey, God, if you if this really is from you, why am I going through so much pain? She God tells us, well, there are two children inside of you. They didn't have the sonars and stuff. No, couldn't see or there was no gender reveal parties anything back then right um, and so they um what happens is uh she god tells her you have two children inside of you and they are warring against each other and the younger shall rule over the older one all right and so now rebecca she gives birth to two children Esau and Jacob Esau comes out first he's hairy so they call him Esau and then Jacob is holding the heel of Esau as he exits the womb which suggests I suggest my interpretation that Jacob wanted to be first so therefore he's holding the heel of his brother trying to mm, I don't say I don't know pull him back in that's just my interpretation of what's going on here. And um, they grow up. And as they grow up, uh, Esau becomes a daddy's boy. Jacob becomes a mama's boy. Esau is in the field. He's hunting. He's going after things. He's with his dad. He's a provider. Jacob hangs out with his mom in the house cooking food. This is, this is a patriarchal world. All right, CT, before you come in me with this woman, this type of stuff. But this is what is going. This is what's going on in this, in the Bible, and and Jacob is under his mother. Esau is pretty much under his dad. Which it's time for another lesson that we can get to where it talks about how parents shouldn't show favorites, and so both of them show favorites. Uh, one to one child, the other one to another. Um, Esau is out hunting one day. He's extremely hungry, and Jacob will not give him any food until he sells him his birthright. Um, Esau sells his birthright, um, and then, a few, I don't know, some years later, um, Jacob is blind. He's older. He's about to die before he dies. He wants to bless his son. Normally, it's the firstborn son who receives the blessing. And this blessing is normally um, legally binding. And it goes to the older son to provide and take care of the family and receive a double portion of the inheritance of their father. And But Jacob and his mother develop a plan to trick their father um, that Jacob was Esau. So... What happens is the mother, they kill the animal. They take the fur from the animal and put it on Jacob uh, because Esau was a hairy man. Put it on Jacob and then um, make his favorite meal and then bring him in front of Isaac. And Isaac blesses Jacob uh, with this blessing that should have gone to Esau. Esau hears about it. He's upset and he vows to kill his brother Jacob. Jacob then goes on the run and while he's on the run he encounters God. God then tells him that he's going to be with him and let him go to his uncle's house and come back home. Jacob gets to his uncle's house and he finds a wife which uh, was uh, Rachel and he sees her, he loves her. Um, That's all it took? Yeah. Mm, it was beautiful. Probably love at first sight, you know what I mean? It's not beautiful. <laughs> that was amazing. You just never know. You know, something, you know, he's, you know he, they probably have time to write out everything. But he sees her, he loves her. He asks Laban, can he marry her? Laban says, sure, but you got to work for me for seven years. However, after seven years, um, he's given a wife, but not the wife that he desired. He's given Leah. And the only thing nice the Bible says about Leah is she has delicate eyes, which means she had nice eyes. It doesn't say anything else about her. Mm. Um, so 
you can leave that to your own interpretation. But you decided to point it out for a reason. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, hey, hey. That's, a, that's the only disclaimer the Bible gives about this young lady. And so, he gives us Leah, then says, hey, if you want Rachel, you got to work for another seven years. He works for another seven years, get Rachel. Then he worked for another six years. Then after that, uh, Jacob said, hey, I'm going back home. So he decides to go back home, and on, he on his way home, his brother hears about it, and he's waiting to meet Jacob when he comes. And Jacob sends off everyone in front of him, all of his animals, his wives, his children, and then while he is by himself, he encounters the Lord. Mm. And so that's is, that is where we are. That is where we that's are. That's a narrative for you right there. That was great. Thank you so much. Um, okay, a uh, clarifying question. So he worked his seven years, received Leah, worked another seven years, got Rachel, who was who he originally wanted. Why did he work an additional six? Uh, for the animals. Oh. Shout out to Uncle Laban for the hustle. Okay. Straight deception, right? <laughs> Straight deception. And uh, also a sign of the times. I would feel that, that they're related, right? Yeah. He's marrying his cousin. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will. I do want to point out, if you did uh, listen to the sermon directly, uh, there's a segment in the notes and segment in the sermon where pastor says uh, it's kind of strange that God is willing to bless us in the midst of our mess. Right. And he said the wrong name of who we were talking about. He brought up David. And that was actually a question that I had. What's your question? Like, or a comment more so. What's your I, comment? <laughs> I was like, this is, I was like, Jacob is acting like David. How? So, we know David is the anointed one, appointed king, all of those wonderful, amazing things that God bestowed upon him. Jacob has been anointed as the, uh, he gets the birthright. He Mm -hmm. gets the birthright. And he's been acting up. Like, he's out here just acting like he's the bee's knees, nobody can touch him. He's going to do whatever he wants, including deception, including... uh, He's he's always he's how I have understood their dynamic is that he's always been jealous of Esau. Esau's just chilling. He's just trying to live his life, and I feel like he may have tried to kill him before. I don't know. That's just the energy. He was just gonna add something to the text. What did you can't say? I feel like energy. Can't like, do. Why can't? Why not? We cannot add to nor take away from the biblical text. How you just gonna add? You, my pastor told me to read between the lines you and can, understand. You can, it. You can read between the lines, but I want to say if there is no he planned to kill that man or <laughs> that where it, go ahead. Keep I'll talking. say okay. Let me say this: the the deception of Isaac was not the first time uh, Jacob was trying to get the birthright. Right. That that's I'll I'll, I'll say okay. that. Let's I'll, do, I'll, let's I'll say go that. <clears throat> I tried to go above and around. I, th- I think about uh, the deception with Bathsheba. David didn't. He's like, oh, that's my baby, but I need her husband to be the father. And the husband didn't want to do that. So David de- devised a plan to kill her husband. There's a lot of similarities here. But that was unintentionally that I spoke the name David. I don't know why that came to my mind. Because, my because tongue, you felt it. My tongue was moving faster than my brain. You felt it, though. Like, that's the piece. Because I, I was like, I was really thinking. I was like, yo, he really acting like David right now. And then you said, yeah. David, Jacob. That, and, 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 I, and, I, and I also stated that we all have had some moments where we've done some mess good and we needed God with us. Good, good save. So you can include yourself in that too. I, I, yeah, absolutely. Why are you trying to come saying. from my boy David? I'm just saying. It's out there. It's you got to thank God for grace because all of us are grace recipients. <laughs> he says, stop talking about my boy. <laughs> David, he even showed up. We weren't even talking about him. This isn't even his part of the Bible. Yeah, so that was unintentional. I don't know. Yeah, like I said, my tongue was moving faster than my brain. See, that's why I got to hear myself. If I don't hear myself, I can't. It's coming out at the same time. What's that? The sound. Like the sound from your yeah. mouth. is so. Like right now, we. I'm glad there's a speaker in here that's coming back to us so we can hear ourselves clearer. Mm. That's just me. Okay. okay. 
Um, and then uh, this this joke, this running joke about you being the first lady out the woods. Yeah. Um, why? Yeah, so that's where I met her. Um, that's where I often tell people when I met her. Uh, she was coming out the woods with um, um, Daisy Dukes tank top. Mm-hmm. Um, some um, old navy filler flops, the thong ones. Um, and then one of the thongs broke on one of the, the sandals and um, ashy knees and ankles. And then she met me, took her in, and did it like Beyonce, you know, I upgraded her. So that's it. That's just it. Mm. That's a beautiful love story. Beautiful. I'm so surprised she let you tell it. <laughs> Beautiful. But it's so with that, you know, talking about upgrading, uh, that's a transformation. And that is our theme for the month of July is talking about transformation, specifically uh, that I do not want to misquote it. Transformation, empowering my own future, mm-hmm. uh, which I really like because it, it uh, is challenging us not to blame others for the reasons why right. we are not, not transforming and the things that we need to do uh, in order for that to happen. Uh, which it gets into your first point, which is pray for divine interruption. Mm-hmm. And you give the examples of Jonah. He got ate up by the whale, and then Paul went to prison. Mm-hmm. That's not how I want my divine intervention to happen. I don't want it. That's, and, and it Initially, alone. Paul did not go to prison for his interruption. His interruption was on the road to the, on the road when God when Jesus shows up and blinds him and converts him into a believer instead of being. A persecutor of the church. Okay. Okay. <laughs> There's a this divine interruption. It seems to come with <laughs> what? <laughs> Continue going. <ahead. laughs> this divine interruption uh, comes with hurt. That's what I'm. That's what I am gathering. Like there's there's some sort of pain that comes with a divine interruption. Am, am I misunderstanding that? It, it depends. You know, all of us, we've had, should have had a, some form of a divine interruption where you know there was nobody but God trying to get your attention. And to, and oftentimes when it happens, it is to allow you to realize that where I am is not where I'm supposed to be. That I'm mm-hmm. heading in the wrong direction and this interruption comes and turns me and push me to where God wants me to go. And also that's why I know we, we all need that divine interruption. If we want transformation, we need God to reveal where we're going. And this will happen with Jacob. You know, he's on his way to see his brother. Um, his life has changed, we would suspect, because he now has experience, excuse me, he has experience <clears throat> the other end of deception. Early on, he's the deceiver. Mm-hmm. Then we see that he's the deceived. And he didn't like that. Right? And so uh, we see, now we see him at night, on this night, have an encounter um, with the Lord. Yeah. Um, and he's alone. So it's, I think, um, there's something to say about when a divine intervention shows up. Yeah. Because. Because what, Paul was alone, right? No, uh, he was with a group of people. Oh, oh, never mind. Yeah. There you go. But there's something <laughs> to say about being alone. And, and you talk about all of the different um, activities and engagements that can kind of cloud us. Uh, right. and, and being alone and thinking and, and having our thoughts and processing our thoughts. Yeah. And one that you didn't mention was, was a phone. Like, I think phone social media apps games like gaming even can be additional ways to engage uh it's a level of engagement that doesn't allow you to think and be alone with god to allow him to come in and and wrestle yeah and so you uh at this point though we're looking at minority mental health month and oftentimes when people struggle mentally it's not when they're in crowded spaces mm-hmm. or when they're around people they love. Um, you really never hear people committing suicide with everybody in the room with them. You feel what I mean? It's, all, it's often when they are alone. 
And if anyone has experienced any level of mental disturbance or mental disruption, oftentimes it's when you're alone, when you have to fight those intrusive thoughts. It's when you're alone, when you have to combat um, the sadness and the depression. It's when you are alone, when you have to deal with what you did in the past that you think people may have never forgiven you for. Mm -hmm. And so when you are alone, when you have to fight those thoughts, um, this is where Jacob finds himself alone, but thanks God, thanks be to God that he shows up. Mm -hmm. And so that's why that was the point that I was trying to drive here, that isolation and abandonment attributes to anxiety and depression um, and those other mental disturbances in which we experience. And so when you're feeling alone, um, when you're feeling discouraged, when you're feeling um, um, as if no one loves you or cares about you, that's what I was trying to point out in this text, that this may also been, uh, may have not been an actual uh, encounter with the Lord. This may have been a mental wrestling match mm. in which... Um, Jacob was experiencing mm. um, because mm. it is in these is it when you're alone that's when these thoughts and these mental challenges are really um, they they take over um, because when you're with engaged in family when you engage in work you have other things on your mind you may also have those things struggling but when you're alone that's all you can think about are those thoughts mm. that's real mm-hmm because we can probably imagine, like based off of the time period, he, if he had an animal to travel with, it could have been a couple days. Or if he was on foot, it could be a week. Mm -hmm. And being just like alone for that long with your own thoughts. You, yeah. Yeah, because he's, he's going back to his brother and he's thinking his brother wants to kill him. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's saying he's going back to face, I want to say his fear. And, and so as he's returning home, I can only imagine the thoughts that are going through his mind. And similar to many people, once they are alone, they feel the burden of whatever they are going to have to face. If it's court, if it's a divorce, mm -hmm. if it's a sickness, if it's a doctor's report, they feel um, the burden of facing that thing. And so they have these mental things that happen and this is um, this is Jacob. Uh, he's alone, but the Bible says the Lord shows up. And so I want to give. I try to to give people hope in that because when a lot of people um, feel alone, <clears throat> loved ones have died, um, friends have left them, marriages have been broken, family have abandoned them, and they feel alone. And and so you feeling alone can be adding more pressure on any of the mental disturbance that you're feeling. Mm. That's real. Mm -hmm. it, like, uh, it amplifies it. Yeah. Um, mm. I hadn't thought about the wrestling being with, um, like, with, like internal. I thought it was, <clears throat> I thought it was truly like God showing up and God's like, all right, Jacob, we gonna yeah. go. Uh, yeah, and so I think, and like I think I also states this in the sermon that this wasn't really uh, a scheduled plan wrestling match, mm -hmm. right? This was that's why I call it a divine interruption. This was something that was not foreseen by by Jacob, and the goal of the wrestling match wasn't for um, to win any type of prize. Um, God was trying to get Jacob while Jacob was just was trying to hang on for dear life. Right? Uh, I think I was talking to someone. Um, this wasn't a boxing match. The goal in wrestling is to see how long, if you can hold the person down for at least three Ooh, seconds. That's real. You know that's what I mean? Real. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a boxing match where it's a hand-to-hand -hand comeback, but this was how can you hold somebody down? And this was a wrestling match. And, and if we're honest, at least I can be honest, you should be honest. 
that you've been in some wrestling matches with God. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't ready for my grandmother to pass. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? And and I prayed that she lived, but she still died. And man, God had to wrestle with that. Mm. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Um, uh, in a span of two years, I had two loved ones, three loved ones murdered in the streets of Milwaukee. Mm. I had to wrestle with God about that. I got out the army. I was interim pastor at the church. And when I got out the army, I told them I wanted to be the pastor. They said, no, you got to apply and go through the process like everybody else. And I had been in the interim for 18 months at that church. And I just knew they was just going to accept me in. Mm. And then when I did accept it, I took almost a $35,000 pay cut. Mm. I had to wrestle with God. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Um, and, 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 and we've had these moments when, with God when we had to have this tug of war. Um, and I think God is fine with it. And oftentimes we, people are afraid to really um, talk to God about their issues and tell God how we really feel. God is not that small that he cannot handle our criticism yeah. or cannot handle our disagreements with him. And I think that's where our faith grows when we can accept what we don't like from God. Our faith grows when we can accept what we don't like from God. When God makes a decision we don't agree with and we don't leave him. You feel what I mean? Mm-hmm. When God makes a decision that that I know I've been faithful, that I know I've been doing the right thing, that I know I've been consistent, and God decides to take something or do something that I do not agree with, but I stick with him because I know whatever decision God makes is for the best, even when I don't like it. And so that wrestling match happens, mm-hmm. right? And, and and so I'm I'm a hold on, right? That's 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 the thing. I, I need this divine interruption uh, from the Lord to come in my life and just you know throw my stuff around so I can be more focused on who He is. But did you know that's what you like? Did you get what you need from from wrestling with God? Because so. With, with deaths, we'll use the examples that you shared. Did you like? What did you need like to go into this wrestling match? Like, did, like did you already have an idea of like what, uh, what you wanted resolved or the question or the feeling like? There's some things we'll only understand by and by, right? Uh, but. And then, and like again, these are not planned wrestling matches, right? No. It, it, it's, so it's not like I'm preparing for this. Hey, I got a plan. I got to train for this wrestling match <laughs> that I'm about to have with God. So let me train my mind, my body, and my soul to be mentally prepared for it. These things often happen unexpectedly. That's why they're divine interruptions. Uh, but it, but the goal is is to leave with enough confidence in who God is and trusting the decision in which he hath made. And so it's what, uh, when it comes to grief, is what Keeper Ross suggests, is getting to that place called acceptance. Right? So she talks about the five stages of grief, uh, you know, um, anger, bargaining, depression. Um, what's the other one? I forget. Denial. But the la- denial and then acceptance, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's once you get it, that, that's the goal to get to that place where you're willing to accept what God has done. Because even though it hurts you, it's these are what I also tag as faith building blocks. That if God helped me through that, whatever else I face, I know he has the power mm-hmm. to help me through the next thing that I'm challenged by. And so that, that that's how I look at it. Uh, it's not I'm planning on going into this prayer like how you gonna do something right that's the goal i need you to do something i don't know and oftentimes it's i don't know what i need him to do but i need him to do something right 
And <laughs> I don't know. It, that, that, that's what it often is because that loved one can't come back. Yeah. Um, that sickness is not going to heal instantly. Yeah. Right? Uh, your desire is not going to happen in the moment that you think you should have it in. But when you learn to trust God through it, it helps you uh, build your faith in who he is. And when he brings you through, then you have a testimony, right, uh, that God did it again. Hmm. Hmm. But you have to be... You have to be determined in that. Like you have to, you have to want it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the next point, right? What's the yeah. next point? What did it say? Uh, I need to be determined to hold on until I get what you need. Yeah, like you said, and sometimes you go into this, you don't even know what you need. Yeah. Right. You you don't you don't know how much patience. You don't know how much uh, perseverance. You don't know how much love you just know you need something and this was david just said i'm not gonna let go until you bless me bless me with what right like with with what <laughs> you know you know it, it's not outlined it's not you no know, and 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 if we re- look at our, your problems look at what you've gone through when you've been in those moments where you said god i need your help oftentimes you don't even know what it is yeah which is which I feel is counter to the conversation we had last time about prayer and knowing, like, going to God with, like, specific things and with specific language. Because mm-hmm. we need to be mature as we grow in our relationship with God. But then here we're saying, just bless me. It's like, like with whatever. Like, I, I, um, maybe I'm lumping them together and they shouldn't be. Um but like that's, that's well, you know, the consistency of you no know, understanding, you no know, being here, being you having this privilege, um, or this opportunity to have these discussions with me and other people are able to see it, and you being able to understand it based off the sets and how things are flowing. Prayer. That's this is what prayer is. Um, it's communicating with God, and and sometimes we know not what to pray for. So in Romans 8, it's the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us. Okay. You feel what I mean? Mm-hmm. And what we know not to pray for, the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf and talks to God about what we missed. Okay. But if we're not talking for ourselves, we don't give the Holy Spirit anything to intercede on behalf of. Mm. So I must stay consistent in my prayer life. Okay that I may also stay connected to the spirit that communicates back to God what I don't even know when I don't even know what to ask for mm-hmm. right um, um, we were driving to Mississippi um, for um, to pick up my grandmother to bring her back to Milwaukee because my cousin and I was graduating from high school mm-hmm. um, and as we were driving my cousins it was four of us we stayed up all night we played 007 on Nintendo, um, well, I forget the name of that game. I forget it. The Nintendo, 007, first person shooting. I used to love them games. I don't play that more, not that no much. I play 2K and Madden now. And then the NCAA about to come out in a couple of days. You getting it? Did y'all no. get access to it? Y'all didn't get no free copies or nothing? No. Not me. The football players? Yeah, probably the athletes have some way to connect with EA Sports, but I, I do not. Okay, cool. So we, I don't even we, have a system <laughs> that could probably play it. I have a PS3. God bless your heart. So we, we, we stay up all night. All is in the car. We fall asleep. My aunt is driving. She falls to sleep at the wheel. Um, we wake up. The car is on two wheels and is sliding down in the ditch um, on, and oncoming traffic is coming our way my aunt just yells out the name of Jesus Mm. that was a prayer Mm. but it did not come with look Jesus protect us from the oncoming traffic Jesus block us for everything that's going on Mm -hmm. all the details were not I'm about to shout again all the details to her request were not verbalized 
but she called on the name of Jesus. So I'm suspecting, based off what Romans 8 says, that the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us and what we know not to pray for, it takes it to God. I'm suspecting that when she called on Jesus, it activated the Holy Spirit to interact on Ooh. our behalf and speak to God. Yeah. And tell God everything we needed to survive in that moment. We go down, we turn, she falls, when she wakes up, she grab. I guess she grabs the wheel, and the vehicle turns, we go down in the ditch, go on the other side of traffic, 18 wheeler coming our way, and, and when she gives up on the pavement, then goes back down in the ditch, and nothing hits us. Ooh. The only thing that we are uh, hindered by is... Uh, I guess the tire blew out. We just had one tire blow out. We fix the tire and we get back on the road and continue to Mississippi. Ooh. Her prayer was Jesus. Mm -hmm. But our need was protect us from crashing, from dying, keep us from mm -hmm. these other vehicles from hitting us, uh, keep this vehicle together. You, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And so when it comes to prayer, the intentionality of, yes, we need to, we need to, you know, have some mature prayers and develop our language that we talk to God. But it also be some moments where we simply don't know what we need, mm. but we going to say we're going to continue to pray until God blesses us to allow us to make it through whatever we're in. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that. God bless your heart. Clarification. Um, yeah, that's really helpful. Mm. Um, so mar marinate on that that's yeah. I will as well <laughs> uh, and as we continue on the third point of I need God to change my destiny yeah. uh, so Jacob wrestles with uh, he has his divine intervention and mm -hmm. he's, he wrestles and at the time which I greatly appreciate is that people were named like their names have meaning. It wasn't because mm -hmm. it sounded cute or looked cute or was unique. Uh, it had intentional meaning meaning to them. Um, have you do you know what the meaning of Marcus is? You ever look it up? I did. Is it? I forget. You can look it up. I'll tell them what Cassandra is. What's your? So there's a couple. Um, so it's a Greek goddess. And she was a prophetess, but no one believed her mm. until after said thing happened. And uh, what's interesting is, is I, I see it sometimes. I'm like, yeah, that I think this is going to be the outcome. People are like, nah, nah, nah. And then the outcome ends up being what I said. They're like, dang, you were right. And I was like, I wasn't trying to be right. I was just trying to, to, to help you. <laughs> like you know some people have the desire to like I have to be right I have to be right I don't I don't have to be right I just this is what I'm thinking and this based off of the evidence that's presented this is possibly the outcome uh, yeah. so yeah that's um so that's interesting so you're a prophetess yeah dang I didn't know that yeah well in, in the in the Greek in the Greek yeah not in the Christian yeah, that's not an anointing I've been given. <laughs> I don't know. This says polite, shining, hammer, a somewhat violent reference that makes sense with Marcus' overlap root word with the Roman god of war, Mars. Hmm. Hmm. I do be fighting like a woman. That would make sense. Let me tell you about the, the fight I had this morning with your pastor. So today's my birthday. We already established that. Before, and, and, and you know, we're going to, us and... And I didn't say she had to come in and do this on her birthday. She the one did, so don't, don't be coming for me. It's not even where I was going with this. I'm just saying, I'm just saying the people that are watching and listening to it. Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming MJ's coming with us. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go have some lunch and have some birthday lunch. Uh, but Pastor didn't wish me happy birthday. Um, he said, where are we eating? And then I said, I was like, I'm not sure yet. Well, where? What time? We need to go. Like, it was very much like, I'm like, bro, calm down. Like, you'll know when we know. Like, what? It's through text. How you how you going to assume that's the way I was saying? How were you saying it? That's what I was saying. Where, I was just trying to figure out where do you want to go. That's just the question I asked you. Four times. 
five days ago. And I said, I'm going to let you know. You, you said you didn't know. And then, so I asked you today, I wanted to be prepared for where I'm going because I you know I, I'm a man of many meetings. And so I got another meeting after this. Anyway, well, um, what is, did, so Marcus is uh, war. M- Mars, Mars, a war, Latin word, I don't know. Hmm. Hey, look at us, Greek. Woo! <laughs> I'm black, but uh, I'm not Greek. I'm black. <laughs> Which ain't me. What's Giannis? What does Giannis mean? He, it, he's Greek. He, and he's black. He, no, but he's not born in Greece. Okay. Was so, he? Was he born in? I don't think no, he was born in Greece. He was born in Africa. Yeah. He African. So, oh. Just a Greek nationalist. Nationalist? I'm not nationalist. <laughs> Greek nationality. <laughs> <laughs> so he can be both. He's still Greek. I mean, he's uh, he he goes by the Greek freak. I think he speaks Grecian. Probably. Is that right? I don't know what the language is. Anyway. Anywho. Um. But anyway, so names have meaning, and they when they're given to us, we are. Um. I I do I do actually feel like we we do maybe take on some form of the names that are given to us. Maybe like root words, Latins, if like they're being put together, or we can try to deny what those are and not kind of uh, and take that and be like, well, I didn't name me, so I'm away from it. But here, Jacob owns up to his name and what mm-hmm. he has, um, and with what he has done. And I think we need to recognize a lot of the ownership that comes with who we are and even not even just our name but how we like our attitudes how we talk to other people the ways that we think about ourselves I think there's what I got from this was Jacob was owning all pieces of him he wasn't blaming anybody else he wasn't pointing any fingers and as we said at the beginning the transformation starts from within in Mm -hmm. which and that takes ownership and Jacob and Jacob did that right Yeah, and and he changed his name. God changed his name on the spot. So his name is Jacob. um, And he said, um, ask him, what's your name? He says, my name is Jacob. And I think that's him coming clean about who he was and really saying, hey, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And God says, well, your name shall no longer be Jacob. You shall be called Israel because you have wrestled with man and God and you have prevailed. And don't we, we get new names. Well, I know we get new bodies. There is a name. My bad. I was, I was just waiting for you to finish. I love to hear, I love to sing his praise. That's about Jesus. Yeah, it is. We get new bodies when we go to heaven. Do we get new names? Yeah, redeemed. My name is redeemed? Yes. I don't want the same name as you. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, name. Yeah, so yeah, we we are redeemed. That's our, that's our, that's my name. We have been redeemed. Paul I'm going by I'm go by Reedy. Yeah, Riri. Yeah, and so God changes His name to Israel, um, and and now He becomes. Um, you now we have the twelve tribes of Israel. They are all named after the twelve sons of Jacob, um, and and He. Walks with a limp after this, as he leaves the present after wrestling with God, and God leaves him with a reminder of who he is. Uh, he walks with a limp, um, and then um, um, the next chapter it says, "And Jacob made is Esau. Esau didn't attack him. Esau didn't attempt to destroy him. He hugged him and he kissed him, yeah. as to signify that he accepted him for who he was." And the Bible says, and he came face to face with God. And as I end the sermon, when we come get face to face with God, we can face whatever our fears may be. And I was, I got to do some research on myself, but I was listening in a conference this week and they were saying how prayer means to be face to face with God. Oh. Yeah. And, and so if that's the case, Jacob committed himself to a moment to be face to face with God so that he'd be able to face his brother in which he feared 
Because mm. he had set up a plan to send his brother all these gifts and all these animals. Um, and then he'll come himself. But he didn't need none of that. Esau mm. said, hey, come here. You're still my brother. And so when we learn how to come face to face with God, we can face our fear. We can face depression. We can face the anxiety. We can face our pains. We can face our mental disturbances. We can face whatever's in front of us. That's good. Mm -hmm. We'll end on that. Stay fabulous, marvelous, and blessed. Peace. Peace. God bless you all. I pray that you get all the help that you need. If you're struggling mentally, please seek mental help. Yes. And if you don't want to talk to anyone personally, dial 988 and you can have a licensed therapist that you can talk to on the spot. God bless you. Take care.